The Los Angeles Lakers season comes down to the health status of Anthony Davis and the efficiency of Russell Westbrook. Free agency pickups in Lonnie Walker and Juan Toscano Anderson give the purple and gold solid depth behind LeBron James on the wing, but is that enough to make the Lakers relevant again? Since 2017, Lakers GM Rob Palenka has traded away or refused to extend productive young players one after the other, D'Angelo Russell, Julius Randle, Brandon Ingram, Lonzo Ball, Josh Hart, Ivica Zubats, and Kyle Kuzma, were all given up on way too soon by the Lakers. To be fair, they won the championship in 2020, but how far nearing age 40 can LeBron carry the Lakers in 2023? And how much of a difference do free agent pickups JTA and Lonnie make? A few things need to happen for the Lakers this year, so let's talk about it. Before continuing, just 8.9% of you watching right now are subscribed, so please subscribe. Also, please leave a thumbs up on this video. It takes a few seconds and makes a massive difference. Despite taking flack for voting to cancel the 2020 bubble, it's incredibly odd that the media and casuals on Twitter have also given flack to the Lakers for getting a lucky championship due to injuries two years ago at this time. The logic LA got lucky makes little to no sense, considering injuries and a lack of rhythm after five months off was one of the main reasons the Lakers were one of only two teams next to the Clippers who opted to end the season. If fan bases of the 14 other teams in the bubble playoffs are complaining the Lakers got lucky, then why didn't their players vote to cancel the season? Having cleared up that narrative behind the Lakers title, let's dive into why a massive portion of fans known as bronze sexuals, an utterly annoying species, are incessant on spreading the narrative that LBJ is the greatest player of all time. Firstly, it's incredible that despite not being a primary scorer, LeBron's about to pass Kareem Abdul-Jabbar in the 2022-23 season to set the all-time record for total points. Very few, if any, athlete throughout the history of not just the NBA but sports in general has maintained their bodies throughout their careers, avoided injuries, and defied father time better than the four-time finals MVP, LeBron James. As he's reached the latter stage of his career, LeBron's adaptability and refinement has kept him as a top player in basketball. Since around the mid-2010s, by the time he had already gone back to Cleveland, LeBron hasn't been the same insane jumper that he was back with the Miami Heat, where he almost purely dominated with brute force and athleticism. Of course, he still has a ton of athleticism left in the tank, but in his later years in Cleveland and now in LA, just take it from two legends in Dwayne Wade and Gilbert Arenas, who spoke on LeBron's refinement. Is LeBron the best he's ever been right now? I think so. And I think I think because, because he's getting slower and the athleticism is going down just a little bit. Yeah. He has to think more. He has to play the game smart, wiser. You know, so something most people had to do at like a 30 and one, 30. He's doing it now. Right. So instead of just using his brute strength like he was when he was younger, he has to be wiser now. So I think, you know, this is like his best basketball, yeah. or just overall. And I got a chance to see him at what we think was his best LeBron in 2020. I feel like that was the best LeBron that we've seen, right? And it was at times where maybe everybody on the outside or even inside, you were frustrated because you were like, bro, just, just take a guy to the block. And it was certain things he just wouldn't do at, at certain times. And so now I watch his game and I say, does he have a weakness in his game? And I start from the rim all the way back to half court. He can do everything. But no, let's take it even back. Let's take it all the way back from the rebound, mm -hmm. right? He does everything now. So now he's good at everything. He's shooting a high 40 and three points now. And his range is out to the logo, mm -hmm. right? You know he's mid-range. He can post you up. He can face you up. He's still going to dunk on you. He can. He, he's, his ability to see the floor now is so much It's better now because he's seen every coverage. Like, it's at the point now where I'm like, I'm looking at this guy and said, I've never seen nobody get better at 36 years old. Like, this, this doesn't happen. And I feel like this is the best, as a fan now, I'm watching, I think this is the best LeBron that I've seen. And it's not, he's not jumping over, hitting yeah. his elbow on the rim, <laughs> he's just hitting his right here on the rim now, you know? And But it's changed, but he's, bro, I've never seen this before. Like this is that he's more, com it was funny, he's more complete. From my personal experience as a Raptors fan in Toronto, I know firsthand the misery LeBron can inflict on not just simply his opponent on the court. Our entire city was renamed LeBronto, and when James finally left the Eastern Conference in the summer of 2018 for Los Angeles, 
it was treated as a national holiday. The 2010s saw LeBron make eight straight finals appearances from 2011 all the way up until 2018, and despite generating a record of four and six in those trips to the finals, measuring him based off that record would be silly of us. In 2007, his Cavs didn't have another all-star against the powerhouse Spurs dynasty. 2011 and 2014 are really the only finals losses that LeBron can be held accountable for. In the four other losses during the finals, he was either up against a super team or had a completely injured slash subpar roster around him. That's why what James did to rosters who would have broken through to the finals in almost any other era, like the Paul George Pacers, the DeRozan Lowry Raptors, the four All-Star Hawks, the Derrick Rose Bulls, among many others, has given so many the opinion that LeBron's at the very top of the all-time list. The discussion between he and Michael Jordan is for another day, but it's a back and forth that leads to very little and is quite honestly a pretty toxic way of dismissing either one of these not just basketball, but world icons and leaders. It's not wrong to appreciate LeBron if you're on the MJ side and vice versa. This take from Jordan's former teammate Steve Kerr puts it best. I, 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 I get asked all the time about, you know, MJ, LeBron, and, and it's such a difficult question to ask. All I know is they're the two, two best players that I've ever witnessed. Unbelievably, LeBron's coming off a season of averaging a career-high 30.3 points per game on his highest field goal percentage in four years at 52.4%. 21-22 also saw James post his first season of averaging both a steal and a block per game since all the way back in the 08-09 season when he was a 24-year-old. Braun also attempted a career-high 8 three-point attempts per night this past season, knocking down a career 7th best and very solid 35.9% of them. Most shockingly, based off LeBron being on the verge of 38, is that his 79.6% conversion rate from 0 to 3 feet was the highest mark of his 19-year career, topping the 78.2% high he said in 2021. That proves LeBron is aging like fine wine. After agreeing to a two-year, $97.1 million extension to stay in the City of Angels, the GM also went to work on the free agent block. Juan Toscano Anderson and Lonnie Walker aren't marquee names by any stretch, but they're solid wing defenders who, on the other side of the court, offensively, are capable of hitting deep range shots to space the floor out. But Juan and Lonnie's most vital chunk of value is going to be keeping LeBron fresh throughout the course of the regular season. Last year, LBJ averaged 37.2 minutes per game, the most amount of playing time James has gotten since 2016-17. That just can't happen at his advanced age. Of course it can because he's a robot, but you don't want him playing that much. A lengthy, high IQ perimeter stopper with a strong base in former Golden State Warrior Juan Toscano Anderson, and an improving 23-year-old who's built upon his career high in scoring in each of his first four seasons in former San Antonio Spur Lonnie Walker, will keep LeBron's minutes per night much lower than his age. Honoring his Mexican heritage, Juan Toscano's already being embraced by the city of LA with his very own mural. Those claiming the Lakers' only source of defense on the wing is Stanley Johnson clearly haven't watched JTA's best defensive moments with the reigning champions. For Golden State, Juan played 73 games during the regular season, averaging 13.6 minutes in those outings. He's not a good scorer, but Juan's career 36.1% three-point percentage forces defenders to respect him from deep. Really what you're getting with JTA is a high energy, upbeat presence both defensively and in the locker room. Anderson's 6'6", 220 pound frame, combined with his attention to detail and quick hands, made him an elite defender in the minutes he was out there for. Warriors head coach Steve Kerr had to go in another direction come the playoffs based on matchups, but that's not reflective of a lack of impact from JTA. His 105.6 defensive rating in 2021-22 would have qualified him for the league lead among small forwards if he had enough minutes. He's bound to find more playing time in LA, as Juan's ability to be the screen setter in pick and rolls will allow him to spend time on the floor working next to LeBron. Realistically, if Toscano, along with Lonnie Walker, can simply be above average within their roles, that'll be enough to keep one of the best players currently on earth 
and the greatest of this generation, potentially of all time in LeBron James, fresh for potentially another playoff run. Out of any of the Lakers' new players, whether it's Troy Brown Jr., Thomas Bryant, rookies Max Christie, and Scottie Pippen Jr., or the two players we just broke down in today's video, who are you most excited to see rock the purple and gold in 2022-23? Best answer down below in the comments gets next video shoutout, and the top 5 commenters with the most shoutouts by September 21st earn free merchandise of their choosing. Last video I asked, what's most intriguing about the Spurs? TJ Views gets the shoutout for saying, what I find to be most intriguing about the San Antonio Spurs are that they can be trusted as a team to develop players properly and make them into great players. They know how to scout and find gems in the draft, regardless of where the player gets selected from. They're a franchise that you don't want to sleep on since they can possibly win a championship in a few years if they get their young core developed well and draft well in the 2023 NBA draft. You tell the story and community speaks, so leave your take on the question to compete and for a chance at next video shout out.